YouTube, it's Bay, and for today's video, I'm in my new shop, that's right, and uh, got a problem going on here. The problem is this guy. Uh, now, for those of you who know me well, you know that I'm a huge proponent of torquing freaking everything. I mean, within reason, within reason. And this is one of them, and I, I hate when this happens, because most of the time when this happens, it's not your fault, right? Because how does this happen? Oh, here's a new one, by the way. I just got it at O'Reilly's, no big deal. The stud itself was, I believe, like a dollar and 22 cents, and then the lug nut was a little bit more. It was like around three dollars, so I will link those in the description below. They're just Dorman parts. You can get them at the dealership as well, and as long as they're the correct hardness, which you can see, the grade, the higher the number, the harder the metal, um, and this is strong as so that should be good. And uh, double check that it did fit. This is, by the way, um, 12 by 1.5. Awesome. So this is, this is what we need to do with that. Excellent. Let's get to it. So in order to replace, I already lost it. Oh, there it is. So in order to replace our little stud, our leg stud, I'm going to start by removing the brake caliper and the rotor, exposing what lies beneath. So, stay tuned. Alright, I'm going to try to do this in a way that you can see. And to shed some illumination on this whole situation, I'm going to... Uh, oh, ha! I thought I was going to blast myself in the face. But I'm on UV mode in my flashlight. Uh, switch that up, and this sweet flashlight... This thing is actually freaking awesome. I got this from Capri Tools. Um, I'll link that in the description. It just, it's just magnetized right there, and uh, I can magnetize it. I can just put this thing wherever the heck I want. Uh, that does it. Okay, so now I've got my 17 millimeter. Loosen these guys. I'm totally in an awkward position so that you can see. <laughs> okay just use this to break them loose and uh, now I'm gonna get a ratchet and make my life easier. All right, cut my 17 millimeter. Okay, there we go, there's one. And once I got those bolts out, I just pulled my caliper off out of the way and suspended it here onto just the coil springs of my strut. In this case, I also decided to remove this little 12 millimeter bolt that held the bracket onto place to give me a little bit more free play so that I can just hang my caliper happily over here. And now that the caliper is off, I can remove my router and just set that aside. And now what's left is just my hub assembly and my broken stud. So let's see what we can do to make some magic happen here. My phone keeps on overheating, so this is filmed in weird chunks. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna, I really need a camera. I like a real camera, but anyway. Here, we have a punch, and uh, here I have a really big hammer. You can use a punch and a really big hammer. Uh, you could also, if you are in a shop that has air power, you can also use a freaking air hammer, which is awesome, and my preferred way of doing things. However, let's see if I can do it this way first, because I'm assuming most of y'all watching this video don't necessarily have an ear hammer. Ah, all right. So, if I can do it, so can you. Now that I got this one out, it's time to put my new one in. Ta-da! And, um, and to help me with installation, I'm gonna put a little bit of anti-seize on there to sort of also like act as a little bit of a lubricant for me. I'm just loading this thing up, just not because you need to, just to make things a little easier. And then I'm gonna, see how there's like this nice space here? This is awesome. I'm gonna shove it in the hole. All right, so I'm actually gonna start by getting this little guy centered in there so that I make sure that I'm pulling it through or pushing it through, I guess. Um, straight and narrow. And I do that by threading the lug nut on by hand first, obviously. And then um, since this little lug nut fits perfectly in there, I'm just going to start by giving it a little bit of love. 
Not too much. You don't want to install the whole freaking thing like that because that can just damage the lug. I mean, you're you're back at square one, but just enough. See how it just like it's it's centered now. It's in there. It's not going anywhere. Uh, this way, I can make sure that as I install it, I install it nice and straight and and uh, nice and straight. Then I got this big C clamp and. the socket that I use to install it with in the first place. That should be good. I don't know, just speak in its language, you know? Like, you like the 22? Okay. Cool. Commence. Tightening. Does that look like it's straight? I think that looks like it's straight. Okay. And then I'm just going to tighten the heck out of this. And if this doesn't work, then I'll go to plan B. But this works about like 50% of the time. And if it doesn't work, you hear that air hammer in the back? That's gonna be option numero dos. I should be wearing safety glasses. Just in case, because if I have them, then I won't need them, right? It's like kind of a rule of thumb. All right. My stud is nicely installed, but my phone overheated and so you didn't get to see like my victory. Now it only exists in my mind. So now I get to put this back together. Heck yeah. So I'm just going to start by putting the rotor on. And in order to get the rotor to sit in place and to hang out there, now that I broke it loose from its rusty life on the hub, I'm just going to stick a couple lug nuts on there. And I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Installation is literally the reverse of removal. How many times have you heard me say that? There we go. You can show, of course, my rotor is nice and clean. And now I'm gonna put my caliper back on. Get them to go on. Ah, easy as pie. Now I'm gonna torque them, duh. 90 foot pounds. Tiny little extension for the upper one. So small, it's not gonna impede ah, proper torque specification at all. And there we go, 90 foot pounds. Okay, there we go, got my 12 millimeter bolt back in place and got this little bracket holding my brake line back in place. And this should go without saying, but don't forget to remove your little hanger off your suspension piece, because let me tell you, that makes a funky noise if you don't. Ask me how I know. <laughs> anyway, hope that you enjoyed this video. Hope that you found this helpful. And uh, yeah, I will see you in a future video where hopefully I have a real camera and not this mess. All right, bye. not your fault, right? I mean, I remember when I used to work at the Toyota dealership and I would have like a cross or a lug nut or something that wouldn't come off. I would always like look in the system and like look up the last person who worked in the car and I would make them freaking replace it, right? Because normally like how, how does this happen? Like they get cross threaded or they're put on too tight so someone didn't use a torque wrench or someone didn't take the time to like, you know, like gently thread on the lug nut before they went to town with their impact, which happens all the freaking time and it's like really annoying. It's like it doesn't take that much time, right? But I understand when you're working on flag hours, the flat rate system tends to always fail you. It always failed me, so okay. it still fails me. But anyway, let's get to it. So in order to replace, I already lost it. Socket for this. Going anywhere. 
Uh, this way I can make sure that as I install it, I install it nice and straight and, and uh, nice and straight. Just in case, because if I have them, then I won't need them, right? It's like kind of a rule of thumb. All right. Of course, if I have them, then I also can't see them. Well. Minimal extension will not interfere with the torque specific. No, oh, it's still too long. That would only exist in my mind. But anyway, uh, like I was saying, this this method really uh, really only works about 50% of the time for me. Um, but this is a good one for the at home DIYer, not the in the shopper with the air hammer and and air tools. Another thing that I like to use in this situation is also like a ball joint press. So if my little C clamp. So if my little clamp in socket trick didn't work, uh, then I'd say the next best thing is to go to an auto parts store like an O'Reilly's or an AutoZone or a Napa and rent a ball joint press tool. It's pretty easy. It's, you pretty much do it the exact same way that I use this. Yeah, you, you got it. You got it. Um, and it's free. But if you're in a shop, use it for good.